Warning, it's impossible to have an honest discussion about now without plenty of explicit language. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by ExpressVPN, HelloFresh, and by the new anti-skepticism conference designed to take QED down once and for all, QEDPOC. QEDPOC, question, exploit, discomfort. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hello, my name is Travis, and I work for my state regulating air pollution. I understand that as our culture exists today, certain types of industry is needed which results in air pollution. However, the fact that my job exists so industry doesn't improperly pollute the very air we breathe means we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey men and women. It's August 25th. And it's Kiss and Make Up Day. Okay. Kind of feel like you should make up first. The angry kissing is weird. You know, That's we're, weird. we're all into different <laughs> shit, Heath. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Dr. Oz's, New Jersey. How dare Arbor, you, Michigan, sir. and Waycross, Georgia. <laughs> this is The Skating Atheist. On this week's episode, you can tweet whatever you want at Jason Raper. You can. Christianity accidentally bans itself from a school district. And David Icke don't need no education. But first, the diatribe. You know what the word Chernobyl actually means in Russian? I just found this out a couple of days ago. It means wormwood. Now, those of you who come out of the crazier versions of evangelical Christianity probably already figured out where I'm going with this. So I'm just going to have to ask you to sit tight for a minute while I catch everybody else up. Because wormwood, in addition to being the plant that gives us all the happy parts of absinthe and vermouth, is also the name that John gives to the first star that falls from heaven in the book of Revelation. Here's the relevant passage. So John has the seven angels. They're all blowing their various trumpets to herald the start of the apocalypse. And when he gets to the third one, he says this. This is Revelation 8, 10, and 11 from the King James Version. Quote, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of that star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. End quote. Now, we atheists have a lot of fun with dumbass biblical claims like stars falling from the earth. But if you imagine that you were a dude in the first century and you're trying to get your head around the concept of a nuclear disaster... A star falling to the earth is actually a pretty good analogy, right? Even more so if you're like an angel who understands nuclear physics, but you have to explain nuclear disaster to said first century prophet. You know, likewise, a person who couldn't have understood the concept of radioactivity could be forgiven for saying that the fallen star just made the waters bitter. Now, you got to admit, that's a pretty wild coincidence, right? Like we're all rationalists here, so we know how coincidences work, but it's still pretty impressive. It's, it's the exact kind of thing that would have stopped 27-year-old Noah in his fucking tracks. And it's the kind of thing that, if taken in isolation, would sound pretty convincing as evidence that there just might be something to biblical prophecy. Now, to be clear, it is not evidence of that, right? <laughs> Recall that this is the third angel. So the order of operations here was supposed to be one a global flaming storm of bloody hail. Yes, that's flaming and it's hail that was supposed to burn up a third of all the trees and all the green grass Two, a flaming mountain falling into the ocean and turning one third of the water into blood. Three, a star named Wormwood falling from the heavens and turning the waters bitter. And even if you allow that God made a last minute change to the batting order, the prophecy says that Wormwood is going to turn one third of all water bitter. And Ch- Chernobyl was a terrible disaster. Don't get me wrong, but it was a long way from that. And on top of all of that, this shit happened in 1986, right? We're still waiting for that fourth angel to darken the, a third of the sun and the stars. But despite all of that, this little nugget is still being offered up as evidence of both biblical inerrancy and the impending apocalypse. I mean, I wasn't exactly taking a Russian language lesson when I learned about this. And, and, and I see why. I see why they use that. Even with all the holes that I just poked in it, I see why apologists and fear mongers want to use this one, because when I first heard it, despite my commitment to logic and my long study of fallacious thinking, I was impressed, right? Like at first, like my instinctual response was, this is too profound to be a fluke. 
Now, luckily, my brain kicked in pretty quick and chased that thought away, right? It's, it's not like we don't have other equally impressive examples that come from other sources, right? There's a prophecy from Nostradamus that seems eerily prescient about the Second World War if you ignore the very clear fact that he's talking about a river called Hister not getting spell-checked on the word Hitler. But, you know, it, it, it's the same way that you have to ignore the fact that John the Elder is clearly referencing the bitterness of Wormwood to make this one work. Right. And and Muslim apologists love to trot out some Quranic prophecy or another that seems to know way more about embryology than Muhammad could have known at the time. But but we don't even have to resort to mystics and holy scribblings to get there. Right. We have countless examples just like this from the fucking Simpsons. Right. But, but as much as the ubiquity of these coincidences should disarm them, our pattern seeking gullibility is so ingrained that we instead try to argue that the fucking Simpsons is also prophetic. Ultimately, though, the whole Chernobyl means wormwood thing is evidence against the accuracy of biblical prophecy, not for it. Because I can guarantee you that at some point in the future, those stars are going to line up even better. Yeah, Some new event will come along that's even more instinctively profound in its accordance with biblical prophecy. Not because the Bible is accurate, but because things are constantly happening right all over the goddamn place. It's the statistical certainty, especially given the leniency that religious people interpret their holy books with. And when it happens, somebody is going to present it to you and they're going to say, see, just like it says here in the Bible. Now, how do you explain that? Of course, in truth, it's just it's not in need of explanation. They've got way more than a thousand monkeys. They've had way more than a thousand years and biblical prophecies are no Shakespeare. But if you do feel like explaining it, what better evidence could you have? Then another time the Bible just happened to line up with reality and then it didn't lead anywhere. Right? Because as you may have noticed, the rapture didn't happen in 1986, nor did it happen in 1993 after seven years of tribulation. Biblical prophecies have failed to materialize in the past. They will fail to materialize in the future. And as much as it should go without saying, apparently Christians still need to be reminded that this is not a point in their win column. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the arteries and veins to my capillaries, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to quicken some pulses? I was picturing something in that vein. There you go. Nice. And if you like puns, then you'll love this intro that we just did. <laughs> then, then you'll love. Okay, all right. Everybody needs a minute to process just how right? good that Masterful. was. Masterful. So we're going to take a quick break for a word from this week's first sponsor, ExpressVPN. I thought I took the good one, right? Heath's data. Get your no, data no, here. Dude, dude, stop. Guys, guys, no. you have to stop selling stuff in this Wendy's parking lot. Uh, after Cheryl introduced French toast sticks without telling us, literally never. Okay, no, that's fair. What, what are you selling anyway? Uh, Heath's data, uh, you know, what he buys, nope. when he buys nope. it, plus a ton of his nope. demographic nope. information. No, he's not. I browse in incognito mode, by the way, so. Well, actually, he have that. turns out that even in incognito mode, your online activity still gets tracked and data brokers still get to buy and sell your data. Wait, they do? Yeah, we sure do. Well, I don't like that. So what do I do about that? Well, you could try ExpressVPN. What's ExpressVPN? Every time you connect to ExpressVPN, you get a random IP address shared by many other ExpressVPN customers. That makes it harder for third parties to identify you or harvest your data. Best of all, ExpressVPN is super easy to use. No matter what device you're on, phone, laptop, or smart TV, all you have to do is tap one button for instant protection. And Eli won't be able to sell my data in this parking lot? I, well, not if he's using computer stuff, no. All right, I'm in. So if you really want to go incognito and protect your privacy, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN. Visit expressvpn.com slash scathing and get three extra months for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash scathing. Go to expressvpn.com slash scathing to learn more. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, in hoisted by its own petard catalog news, <laughs> Christianity jumped up its own asshole this week and banned itself from a school library. The Christian idiots in Tarrant County, Texas, were doing their latest book banning campaign, and they're trying to get rid of anything that mentions sex or sexual orientation or gender identity or anything related to whatever it is they think critical race theory might be. It's a mm -hmm. big list of things they think it might be. They're trying to ban all that, and parents and community members were allowed to register a complaint about any book that might have that stuff. And 33 books were officially challenged. Well, thanks to a hero who infiltrated this bigot system they have, 
One of those challenged books was the Holy Bible. And they had to ban the Bible. Yeah, right. So basically they banned themselves and now they're turning to the rest of us and saying, see, we told you they'd come for the Bible. This is reverse. <laughs> Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> okay. But now that we know that they're this stupid, we might actually be able to get them to hate crime themselves, too. This just opened a world of possibilities, guys. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, we should be able to bear rabbit them into a lot of stuff here. <laughs> so this all started last year when the Keller Independent School District formed a special committee to review the entire list of books in the library and the curriculum. They looked at all the challenged books and kept some while banning others. But over the last year, a bunch of Christian bigots, with the help of some Christian political action committees or, or hate groups, whatever you want to call them, yeah. they managed to stack the seven-member board of trustees with three new members, bigots. And the new board decided to do another full review, during which time all the challenged books are banned. That includes... The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Wow. Yikes. And an adaptation of Anne Frank's Diary. But Jesus. Yeah, they banned those two, but they also banned the Bible because they kind of had to because they're stupid. Right, right. And the one that they're upset about is the one that endorses slavery and offering your daughters for <laughs> rape as an olive branch. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. I think we all heard enough about Anne Frank. Am I right? I mean, look, the girl wasn't even good at hiding. Okay. <laughs> oh, Can we get Christ. someone's story who was good? I like hiders who don't get found. Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> it should have been clear from the start that banning Toni Morrison and Anne Frank is fucking absurd. But apparently these Christian idiots couldn't see their own asshole coming as they twisted around in a one man human centipede formation and got hit in the face by their own ass. That being said, as fun as it is to watch the idiots fail for a second, this whole thing definitely ends with that school board reinstating the Bible yeah. while still banning anything about two moms or two dads or whatever they want to ban. Intellectual honesty has no place on a school board in Texas. They wanted so badly to erase the idea of anti-black racism in American history and erase that whole kerfuffle in Germany Apparently, that they also banned the Bible in their heads the divine word of God was worth sacrificing in order to pwn the libs by whitewashing history. And I don't know, if you listen closely, do you guys hear that? You can hear all the tolerant liberal churches calling out the bigots. Do you, do you hear it? Oh. Just, oh, just give it a second. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, it's fucking nothing. <laughs> just oh, oh, you know what? Perhaps they're being drowned out by the objections from all those free speech absolutists that always show up to defend the use of racial slurs and transphobia. <laughs> 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 also worth noting, Texas is far from the only place this type of thing is happening. For example, in Florida, the Stop Woke Act, also known yeah. as the Don't Say Gay Bill, bans anything from the curriculum for certain age groups that relates to sexual orientation. And it gives any parent the right to sue the school if there's a violation. Well, the Bible is definitely a violation. Obviously, you can't say gay is evil without saying gay. But right. these idiots forgot how, you know, wording works with the whole nature of words and how that opposite, you have to say the word. So maybe a lawsuit to ban the Bible is the only way to get the point across. They only speak dumb at this point. Also, maybe some lawsuits to ban every single other book in the library, which are lousy with hetero couples and hetero propaganda, as far as I know. They're grooming kids to be molested by pedophiles of the opposite sex. And that is unacceptable. <laughs> right. We yeah. need lawsuits. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. That sounds fun, but I kind of wish we didn't have to go through a, do you see how stupid you are? Multi-year legal process to get common sense <laughs> legislation in the country. That'd be great. That'd be, nice. <laughs> That'd be great. I don't want to be a downer. But if we got to do absurd lawsuits, we got to do absurd lawsuits. I don't know. But there is one other solution and it's much easier than a lawsuit. And it's actually kind of contained in the problem. These idiots just made a list of books that every kid should read well, except maybe the Bible, but a list, a list of books every kid should read and told them you can't read this. That alone should get plenty of kids interested, right? But if they're not, get those books for your kids. Tell them about what happened and get them those books and give them a nice reward for doing a report on each of those books and making sure they read them. Bring those reports to school and tell the administration to do their fucking jobs that you just did for them. Fuck. And in Steady versus Jason news. We've got a follow-up to a good news story from a couple weeks ago that is 
even more good news here on the scathing atheist. Amazing. Weird. Yeah. Feels like I might have to start pinching myself if this headline segment gets any more positive. But here we go. Arkansas State Senator Jason Rapert, who swore. (laughs) I'm so happy about this. (laughs) Who swore (laughs) he would, quote, never back down and never give in, end quote, to the lawsuit against him for blocking his atheist constituents on Twitter, <laughs> gave up and backed down awarding American <laughs> atheists $16,000 of Arkansas's money this week after it was obvious that not backing down and not giving in was going to involve the courts seeing what he does with his social media. <laughs> yeah, you're no Rick Ashley, buddy. <laughs> He's he's the guy holding himself back in the TGI Friday. Yes, right, right. Except instead of another drunk idiot who maybe he's afraid of, he's afraid of an atheist nerd with a law degree, which is amazing. <laughs> I love this. Okay, I'm not saying Jeff Blackwell, lawyer for American atheists, litigation counsel for them. I'm not saying Jeff couldn't beat the fuck out of Jason Ray Pat <laughs> in a TGI Friday's parking lot if he wanted to. I'm just saying he wouldn't. He's a gentleman. Okay, Keith. New plan. We get enough beers in Jeff in Phoenix in April. We get him in a fighting spirit, take a quick road trip, put a wife beater on him. We can make this happen. I believe in us. I th- yeah, I think like five beers he'll happily get disbarred. To it's a stressful <laughs> weekend. Exactly. Thank you. That's what I thought. Yeah. So for those of you who weren't here a couple of weeks ago, Raypert blocked four of his constituents on Twitter and Facebook way back in 2018, which you're not allowed to do if you're using those platforms as part of your public office. American Atheist sued. Then last month, the judge in that case made Raypert turn over a giant trove of documents he's been trying to hide from the court. According to the Friendly Atheist blog, quote, They included details about all his social media accounts, including deactivated or deleted ones since 2014, all the times he's blocked people from interacting with those accounts, all the times he's reported complaints to state officials, and all the times he's mentioned words slash phrases like atheist, Project Blitz, and Christian Nation in an official capacity, end quote. So... Rather than deal with the literal discoveries that that legal discovery would entail, eh, Rapert settled, which means that the state pays the American atheist court costs. Rapert will have to unblock certain atheist constituents on Twitter and provide, quote, written documentation showing possible wrongdoing, end quote, if he wants to block them in the future. (laughs) And in response to this whole thing, Rapert put up several huffy snit videos over the last week. They're the best! Precious. (laughs) But even more precious, this is my favorite part, we got an escalating series of absolutely elated messages from Jeff Blackwell along the way. Did you guys see this one? One was just a high-pitched squeaking noise for a good minute. I don't even know how he said that. As a It was amazing. My favorite part of those videos is where Rapert accuses American atheists of slander and then goes on to slander them. (laughs) Yep, he sure does. Now, this is where you come in, podcast listener. Listen closely. Jason Rapert isn't in office for much longer, but until he's gone, every time one of you, his constituents, keeps typing the word cheese under all his Facebook posts until he blocks you, (laughs) he has been ordered by a court (laughs) to put in writing why he blocked you. And not to toot our own horn, but there are a lot of you right now. I mean, a lot. Feasibly. Enough of you to make Jason Rapert do pretty much nothing but provide written explanations for why he's blocking our listeners for the rest of his term. Do with that information what you will. Seriously, Eli said just the word you you could literally he will lose his mind just seeing a, a little emoji of cheese after a bunch of stuff after like the 10th one. He's going to lose his mind and he's going to have to write 10 notes. And on that note, we're going to pause for a word from our other sponsor this week, HelloFresh. Guys, what are you doing standing on the porch? We have to record the rest of the podcast. Noah, we are savoring. You're savoring? We sure are. Summer's almost gone. And so Eli and I are soaking in every last second while we still can. Right. Guys, look, if you really want to savor every last second of summer, why don't you try HelloFresh? What's... Hello Fresh. With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I don't know, Noah. How does getting our groceries delivered help us savor the summer? 
Well, you can skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up that last bit of summer fun. HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with a curated selection of quick breakfasts, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. Plus, when school gets back into full swing, HelloFresh's quick and easy recipes, 20-minute meals, and low-prep, low-cleanup options provide an even faster route to putting food on the table around your packed schedule. Mm, I don't know, Noah. My son's preschool is pretty expensive. Can I afford this? Hello Fresh? Well, Hello Fresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant, and it's even cheaper than grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. Hello Fresh sent us a box to try, and the meals were delicious and easy to cook. That's why I know Illusions personally endorse it as a product. All right. That sounds great. We're in. Where do we sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and use code scathing16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. So we go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and use code scathing16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. That's right. Now, will you guys please come in and finish the show? In a moment, we're still savoring. Okay, but do you have to do it naked? One savors with all parts, Noah. All. Exactly. Parts. Thank you. Our neighbors are going to call the cops again. Let them. And we're back. Next up in headlines, you can learn a lot about people. When you hear them have an argument. Is this about the patron bonus material, Heath? <laughs> yeah, it's a metaphor for everything. <laughs> it's got poop in it. <laughs> but yes, you can learn a lot from hearing people argue. And that's why evangelical preachers should not have public arguments. Learning about them in pretty much any capacity goes very badly for them. Speaking of which, evangelical preachers had a public argument last week. That's right, we have an idiot fight. Get excited. <laughs> and it's a grape-themed idiot fight great yeah all right southern baptist preacher beth moore tweeted about how she has a crush on jesus christ after he provided the amazing grapes that she's growing in her garden and that's when a bunch of southern baptist patriarch dude bros had a meltdown because that tweet told us all about a graphic sexual relationship between beth moore and a ghost so they're mad <laughs> Where, where was she putting the grapes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's as long as she wasn't pulling them out too fast, because that's where you get into trouble. No, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so Beth Moore was already a big source of problems for the Southern Baptist establishment before this, mostly because she does lots of uh, lady talking, which is highly frowned upon. Mm -hmm. And she only supports some, but not all of their bigot stuff. So much. She's anti-choice and she's definitely homophobic. But she's also anti-Trump, kind of. And she's a woman with a job who occasionally wears pants. So, you know, pros, cons, a lot of good, a lot of bad. Well, here's the tweet that started a very heated argument within the Southern Baptist ranks last week. Quote, I'm growing grapes for reals. It's like a miracle in 50 jillion degree weather. If Jesus is trying to get me to have a crush on him, it's working. End quote. Begin blood feud. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Beth, we, we already done overlooked all your vagina having, but this is taking it a bit far. <laughs> all right? It was. That's what happened. Okay. <laughs> now I kind of feel like the true cause of this, you know, invocation of God's will is some dude's particularly bad tomato season. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these ladybugs are my fault now. Is you're telling me? <laughs> Absolutely. The grapes were better than tomatoes. One of them freaked out for sure. So here's a couple of the responses she got after that tweet. One guy said, Jesus Christ is not your boyfriend or your homeboy. She didn't say homeboy. That's weird to include that. Very. Jesus is not your boyfriend or your homeboy. He is your Lord and your savior. Read the book of Colossians. Goodness. Another said crush how about you love him by changing your evil ways and obeying his commandments <laughs> john fourteen fifteen exclamation well no i End get it tweet. i get it because like if i understand sin correctly this or this tweet means that jesus already committed mind adultery with her or something oh <laughs> yeah a bunch of people are like take your relationship with the ghost of a two thousand year old rabbi seriously <laughs> i get to vote <laughs> yep that's correct so beth moore she heard all that and she clapped back hard. Let me hear it, B. Yeah, you ready? Okay. Let me hear it. She responded, some of y'all won't be getting any grape jelly for Christmas. Mm -mm, no, sir. And don't whine to me if you're crushed about it either. 
fucking zing, right? She didn't yeah. even do W I N E for wine. No, F- no, she didn't, no, didn't trust her people to get it. Yeah, no, but crushed. She said crush. She no, did a, a bit of a wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was her clapback. Harsh. And that's when her nemesis just couldn't take it anymore. His name is Josh Boos. <laughs> which, 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 right? Okay. It sounds like a lie, right? right it yeah, like no, it does. Somebody named Bosch Juice was like, I'm not, that's not my name. <laughs> What's my it name? Sounds, it sounds like his name. Here's, here's what I'm going to go with. All right. And I'm sorry to derail you, Heath. I think he is a sentient grape named Josh Juice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put on some pink face. That makes so much sense. Started a Twitter account. If that's the case, I withdraw this whole story. It's very reasonable. <laughs> yep. But Josh Boos, allegedly, his name is Josh Boos. <laughs> he went nuts. He's an extra bigot, like even for a Southern Baptist preacher, which is impressive. He tweeted, when I pointed out that Beth Moore shouldn't be crushing on the Son of God, rather than clarifying, she tweeted out, some of us wouldn't be receiving any of her grape Christmas jelly. Well, someone in our church gifted me with an early Christmas present last night. And there's a picture of a jar of grape jelly that he got. Jesus a jar of jelly. Christ. His, his big response. Was I got my own jelly. jelly. I already have jelly. I don't need your yep. jelly. <laughs> Jesus. Come, come on, Beth. Come on. There's a great pun about him getting marmalade just waiting for you. Oh, yes, Beth. Come on. Beth, we'll freelance this one for you. I know different sides, lovers to friends, all that, but we could do this. Okay, but let, seriously, let's take a moment to acknowledge that's the dumbest fucking response to a joke we've ever heard. Yes, right. Right? <laughs> Every year, people write to us. They write us emails to respond to their charity roasts like they were feedback on a doctoral thesis, and that is still the dumbest response to a joke we've ever heard. I have jelly, so I win. I had jelly. <laughs> And believe it or not, this insane (laughs) argument was not quite over. Beth Moore came back by saying the jelly in the picture won't be as good as hers. And she told Josh Boos to lighten up. And that's when he said, I'm actually rather lighthearted. Just ask my staff. A lot of people, (laughs) a lot of lighthearted people end up saying that. (laughs) But when it comes to theology, there's no room for ambiguity that appears to be blasphemy. And quote, blasphemy. Right. About grapes. <laughs> I'm sorry, wait. I'm lighthearted. Just ask the people I could fire for disagreeing. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Fuck. I'm getting a jar. Karen, get a jar of peanut butter. We are the spiritual leaders of hundreds of people. <laughs> All of them also get to vote. Bring me peanut butter. I'm losing a Twitter fight. <laughs> yep. So that is what it sounds like when people have sincerely held beliefs about grapes and necrophilia and the relation of those two things to each other. Religion is important. This is serious. (laughs) They're allowed to drive and vote. (laughs) And you have to respect their beliefs. Yeah. Fuck. And in enough of your lies, Brary News. Throw away that rabbit's foot and spend your rent money on lotto tickets because we have even more good news from last week as the Patmos Library in Jamestown, Michigan, which regular listeners will remember, had its funding cut entirely for its refusal to remove gay books from its shelves, has raised over $150,000 for its continued existence in spite of bigots on GoFundMe. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm really glad this happened, but... Every step our public libraries take towards being like our healthcare system is a bad step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair. So quick reminder, this all started because Patmos refused to remove a graphic novel about a gay person's experience from the library. They were harassed at board meetings. They received abusive messages and in-person visits from people calling them pedophiles and groomers. And at long last... Last month, the city voted to completely defund the library with, and I didn't know this at the time of reporting last week, I shit you not, signs that said, vote no to the library. (laughs) Wow. Okay, so good work saving the library. That's good. But you guys were like 10 minutes away from libertarians getting mauled by bears. I'm pretty sure that was about to just just weigh everything next time. Think about it. Think it all the way through. Yeah, God, they wouldn't even have had access to the book that would have warned them about it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
But like I said, this story has since gained traction. And as of this recording, the library had raised more than $150,000, which means it'll be able to keep its doors open with the gay books included for at least part of 2023. And I bring up this story for an important reason. Last week, when I talked about this story, I talked about the importance of local politics to keep this kind of shit from happening. But all too often, local politics fails us, right? Like if you live below the Mason Dixon line, there are probably more, you know, ignorance, Jesus loving fuckos in your town than there are reasonable humans who deserve love and dignity. <laughs> also in like fuckstick Michigan, for yeah, sure. Exactly. Or like my anywhere part of outside Jersey. of yeah. a large city. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And since it's been assured to me by our legal counsel that why don't we try doing some mass shootings for a change isn't a solution to nope, stuff like this. It isn't. Yeah. GoFundMe campaigns are Right. The Internet has connected our world. And unlike your town council meeting in real reality, the one that we can all see, we outnumber these worthless schools by millions. And we shouldn't be afraid to use those numbers and remind these dinosaurs that they're going extinct and that in the reasonable parts of the world, by which I mean major cities, they're already <laughs> dead. <laughs> and finally tonight in Mind Over Motto News. We're going to finish the headlines right where we started them with a story about a Christian nationalist effort to invade the public schools in Texas going wrong. Yeah. Oh, this this might be even better. This right. Is this, is this pretty fucking is choice. Perfect. It's a good week. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. So last year, Texas passed a law that required public schools to display in God we trust posters. Now, they do require that the posters be donated by outside groups because forcing non-Christian parents to pay for their kids' unwanted religious indoctrination is a bridge too far for even them, apparently. But it's still bullshit. So atheist activist extraordinaire Chaz Christ with a butt plug Stevens, a.k.a. the hero Gotham needs, is answering the call by <laughs> donating a bunch of posters that say, in God we trust, in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And wow, just like a real... Sophist's choice over there. <laughs> Christians, right? <laughs> sophist. I know it's sophist. It fits Sophie's. Yeah, it does. it does. It's perfect because to say no, they have to admit that they hate a language for being too Muslim. -y. A yep. whole alphabet, no less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, to, to their credit, the Texas legislature did try to chas prove this law. Impossible. Right, well, yeah, but they, they like they brought in like evil universe Heath or whatever and asked him to plug up every <laughs> possible crack where a loophole might shine through. Evil universe Heath would have caught this okay, too. That's sure. <laughs> fair. But the law is super specific about what imagery goes where. They specify that the letters have to be like big enough to be readable by the naked eye. They specify that you have to put it in a prominent place and not in a basement behind the beware of the tiger sign. Hell, it even <laughs> says you can't include other words, so you can't put up a sign that says like, in case God exists, we don't trust him or whatever. It's like, <laughs> smart, smart. Something like that. It also, by the way, means that you can't just put up a framed $1 bill or a picture of a penny like a couple of the kids, uh, <laughs> schools did in Kentucky when they tried the same bullshit. But they didn't think to specify that the words had to be in English or even in the Roman alphabet. <laughs> so good. And it turns out even that tiny crack was enough <laughs> for Chaz to wedge himself into. Yeah, great work. Also, just checked. There's nothing in the law that says you can't have an even bigger sign above it with an arrow pointing down and whatever you want on that bigger sign. Oh, interesting. I'm just saying, lots of possibilities there. Ideas, welcome. <laughs> I was going to say, if ever there was a dream team of loopholes and fucking with Christians, it's Heath Enright and Chaz, right? I mean, Chaz, <laughs> hit us up, boo. He's not great at returning text, but he is great in jam session. We'll get him there, buddy. <laughs> so we'll get him there for you. So yeah, it, kudos to Chaz for finding a tiny bit of wriggle room still left in this law and for recognizing that the fear of Arabic script might be a chink in the Christian nationalist armor. <laughs> it's also it's it's a good reminder of why atheism still needs its smart asses. We might not be fun to travel with, but we still have our uses. <laughs> I like that they have to use his poster if they haven't got one yes, already. They oh, have right. to. Like according yeah. to the technical wording of the law, if he sent out a bunch of these. And if they got that before something else, they have to use it, technically. This nice. is the best. All right. So with our existence as justified as it's ever going to be, I guess we can close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, David Icke will finally answer our burning questions about how we managed to grow up without knowing any of the things. <laughs> I'd consider myself a lover of knowledge, and my friends can attest to the fact that my interests are quite diverse. But one of the things doing this show has taught me is that there are also wide swaths of knowledge I don't want. 
And rarely have I ever wanted to know something less than I wanted to know what David Icke thinks is wrong with the kids these days. <laughs> but now I know it anyway for this installment of <laughs> Everything You Need to Know. So in this chapter, we're going to learn how they, the Archontic Reptilian Holographic Jews, sure. cast their spell. And mostly we're going to focus on education. But again, it's by controlling perception. He calls the passing on of perception, perceptual motion. Get it? Fuck you. I like the it. other impossible <laughs> thing, but with a different middle phoneme. <laughs> if God Awful Books has taught us anything, it's that just because you're making up confusing bullshit doesn't mean you can't give it a cutesy, somehow more confusing <laughs> nickname. Right. Yeah. So this asshole starts off with two and a half pages of spelling out the very concept of the bigger picture. Yeah. Right. Including a visual aid, which is literally a smaller picture. It is. It's, yeah. It's a close up of a butterfly wing. But, you know, it could have been triscuits or a testicle. It's fascinating. You know, we have to zoom out. <laughs> Just to be clear, though, when David Icke zooms out, he sees... Jewish lizard aliens on Saturn looking all guilty. Yeah, like, you he, needs anything. To, he needs to zoom in a little more. <laughs> also, got to admit, I had to look up scatter cushion. Apparently, that's a British phrase. I was I was a bit disappointed. It's throw pillow. It's OK. No, oh. I, I use it in the way you were thinking. OK, good. Wait, what? what is what is it actually? It's a throw pillow. Oh, boring. And now we're talking about the deep state. <laughs> it was it was only a matter of time, guys. God, reading this thing, it's like I'm bartending again. He's the guy who sits down and he's like, top shelf Long Island iced tea, please, with the fancy gin. And just you can start counting right away. Just three, two, one. It's just like when the Jews did 9-11. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what's happening next. Yeah. Yeah. Guaranteed. God, the subchapter ends with him trying to force all the uninformed Republican gripes into a single fucking list. <laughs> yeah, he might as well start blaming the Jews for the price of gas and yeah. music these days. I feel like DeSantis is just copying off David Icke for his platform at this point. It's so similar. <laughs> right. Got to give him a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be running against liberal Charlie Crist. Yeah. So that's exciting. <laughs> So and then he explains that the deep state gets you early, which is why even very young children tell David Icke he's full of shit. Yeah. And there's a visual aid for the concept of parents, you know, yep. parents. Mm -hmm. They're the like tall people holding hands with the short people. So <laughs> parents, you guys don't like dad. Have you heard of these? Yeah. So apparently the evil insidious program is really your fault for telling your kids the world exists. We learned that. OK. Real question, is it just me or did this section feel like he was soft pitching us David Icke's primary school for unfucked kids by lizards? It, like, for a long time, yeah. <laughs> God, so, okay, this I love this moment so much. He literally references in his own goddamn book a fight that he got into with a ref at a children's <laughs> soccer match. With a referee! Yes. This is amazing. And a parent had to be the voice of reason and tell David Icke to shut the fuck up. If a sports dad is telling you <laughs> to calm down, <laughs> you just yelled a slur word at a referee and yeah. you yelled a slur word that's worse than the slur word from the sports dad who is telling you to calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So in case your fear was insufficiently monger, the next sub subheading is called child stealing state. <laughs> he, he means school. God, he's, he comes after women's lib in this yeah. chapter. <laughs> Baffling. His point at the end of this paragraph is essentially, if y'all weren't so busy in the voting booth, you might notice the Jew hologram stealing your baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He then argues that the state's effort to curb child abuse are going too far. Yeah. I mean, this is clearly just David Icke being mad about that one time or probably many times that a social worker saw him walking down the street. He's wearing the fucking bead curtain of turquoise for pants with two kids next to him. He has kids. And the social worker was like, hey, kids, you okay over there? You want to <laughs> blink twice if you need help from turquoise bead man? <laughs> right, yeah. I noticed your dad called himself the Godhead. Do you want to have a private conversation? <laughs> ah. He just yelled Godhead. He didn't know who I was. <laughs> And then, yeah, so then he bemoans the existence of publicly funded education in a subchapter called Schools Programming Prisons for Kids. Okay. He's, he's like, basically, he's like, if you think about it, the dropouts are the ones that get the real education. 
Yep. David Icke and guys wearing big dog t-shirts. Same educational philosophy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he actually argues against education that prepares you for a job because that is a lizard alien <laughs> conspiracy. And a person whose job right now is writing books, writing that sentence in this book is just so right. inside of his own ass perfect it's amazing ah and then he treats us to his back of the cereal box understanding of fucking neurology in a subchapter about brain hemispheres called left right left 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 no no ba ba selects it he doesn't yeah, right it. exactly right <laughs> yeah no apparently the bad guy's biggest fear is people as articulate as david ike and that's why they discourage us from doing artsy stuff <laughs> Yeah, too much art and science, and you could choke to death on a cookie dressed as a turtle shell disco ball. <laughs> okay, just to be clear, if lizard aliens who control the world could be defeated by more like BFA degrees, <laughs> the beginning of the sentence was wrong. Yes, the, 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 right. No, just it's, it's none of that. I'm just picturing like an Avengers Endgame lineup. All the bad aliens have landed. I step forward. <laughs> <laughs> alien ships just start exploding in the sky right yeah oh my god it's a fucking pigeon i don't know <sighs> he really means it hey you can have the rings he goes the mystic osho explained it perfectly i'm like i already don't believe you before i read the quote man already don't believe you <laughs> yeah quick reminder osho by the way is the wild wild country capitalism based guru yes so yeah david ike is now sourcing from the we gotta poison all these homeless people guy yeah, yeah. also the whole some people are left brain some people are right brain that's a myth it's that's, not yeah. how it works none yes. of that is any yes. so much more complex than that oh god he spends a lot of this chapter bitching about his homework right <laughs> And we're going to have a free soda machine in the cafeteria yeah, yeah, of right, the world. Yeah. And ponies for like his whole thing. This whole book is like he's running for middle school vice president. It's so stupid. He, he has this really long quote where somebody points out that if your kids watch eight hours of television a day, homework really starts to eat into their free time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you all, but my kid is following three soaps right now and he needs to focus. He yeah. needs to focus. God, I, I love how boomers are always all like, oh, well, in my day, kids played outside. And they never realize that the reason it changes is because there's just more interesting shit than drinking from a garden hose now. <laughs> right? Not to Heath. <laughs> Not to Heath. Isn't that right, buddy? <laughs> I have garden hose for life. Garden, and you, you have garden hose water and you have raspberries from the thing and you just play yeah, no, it's ball great. game sports. Very simple. So I feel like... Look how dumb all those educated people are is as a real key to his appeal, though. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Books are stupid. Well, OK, except for this one. Books are stupid. It's just like Plato said in his mm, no. yeah. okay. <laughs> allegory of the cape. No, it's book. Fuck. He's, he's like he's talking about schools and he's like, well, if schools are so great, why would kids not want to be in them? I'm like, yeah, that's how we know the <laughs> dentistry is bullshit, too, man. Yeah, and, and kissing grandma. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Okay, he's got a whole section on algebra Psh, bunch of bullshit am i right <laughs> okay at this point he just completely forgot he was writing a book and he started playing out a fight that he had with his middle school math teacher at some point yes he actually said this is an exact quote he says like algebra what the fuck is that all about <laughs> what does x equal couldn't care less mate that's an exact and yeah. then he's like fart noise boobies yeah <laughs> Five million three hundred eighteen thousand eight, whatever it is. Flip it over. It says boobies in the calculator. <laughs> well, and also, so he, he occasionally like accident, like broken clocks his way into a, a few actual problems with public education. So you always have to temper those moments with the fact that he's doing all of this in service of the point that lizard Jews from space are trying to take over the world. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and his criticisms of public education are almost always those fucking minion meme. Like I ain't never done used algebra in my life. And it's like, yeah, man, you're a bar back at Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> if education was directed at your life path, school could have happened for over Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> That's not how we roll. <laughs> right. But if you had an extra semester of art class instead of math, You'd be crushing it at one of the, you know, at one of those art firms. Yeah, so right. you'd, be doing, you'd be great. We got to change the school system. Uh, at one point, he starts talking about how being a teacher sucks. And I'm like, I'm sure it does. But at least some of that's because, like, kids' parents are sometimes you, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> he's basically spent an entire meal complaining about the food, and now he's wondering during dessert why the waiter seems unhappy. Yeah. Yeah, he's arguing in favor of, like, more art programs in school, but he fucks that up. Like, of course, I agree with that, and you still got that wrong somehow. Yeah. Uh, and, and then he pitches us on the idea of, of homeschooling in a chapter called Another Way. He, he starts this one off going like, hey, you know who else wanted all the kids to learn stuff in public schools? Nazis. That's right. <laughs> fucking Nazis. Right. But they were pretty clearly anti-globalist bankers. I feel like no, David Icke was really torn there about the Nazis oh, in this particular way. He starts talking about self-directed learning. And I'm like, look, man, I'm normally a real advocate of self-directed learning. But given that we're reading about it from the poster child of the dangers of self-directed learning, I'm going to hold <laughs> off on my endorsement a bit. Hard same. This subchapter might as well be called, uh, 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 Noah and Eli, sometimes idiots homeschool their yeah. kids too. Yeah, most people are idiots. They're yeah. worse than like, you know, the underpaid public school teacher. Well, and even the ones that aren't generally don't have time to actually do it. Or, yeah. Yeah, or can't do it. Yeah. Oh, and if you didn't think it was Boomer enough at this point, by the way, he literally starts bitching about participation trophies. Yes! <laughs> yeah, for a guy who was given the Godhead on a mountain in Peru by doing absolutely nothing on his own admission, awful judging yeah, of other people. <laughs> right? And you're going to get something right once in a while. Yeah, fine. All right, so with uh, Parenthood and Primary School out of the way, he goes on to talk about the real evil college. He's like, college is unnecessary. Just look at me. I'm like, that's not the dunk you think it is, Davey. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop. <laughs> if a lot of your chapter's point depends on a deep and earnest admiration of David Icke, you're going to lose me. <laughs> We're looking at you, man. <laughs> he goes, the poor kids I argue with on college campuses aren't always smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Does he actually do that? Does he go to universities and do that man on the street bullshit? I'm sure he does. Oh, God, God. I hope so. Just kids running over to Ray Comfort. Hey, I'm not a good person. Can you save me from turquoise? <laughs> I, would you have any answers about Jesus? I don't know. <gasps> could we pit them against Right. Each other? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I feel like we could. Oh. They might explode or like. I would rent the Ark Park or whatever the fuck they do those debates. Form a black <laughs> hole of knowledge. There's a three man yeah. audience and worth every penny. <laughs> So, of course, this is where we learn that the real problem schools is that they don't teach David Icke's version of reality. This is also where I wrote in my notes. God, I wish I could read at 1.5x, you know? <laughs> what the fuck is X? Some kind of like ivory tower algebra? <laughs> no, X. <laughs> he starts talking about brain resonance. Okay, thank you. He he He's going dribbling into a paragraph so hard that it feels like a heroin nod here. Right. He's like that learning by which to which you could also learn if you knew. Just going to rest on this fire hydrant for a second. <laughs> OK. Middle of New York so, City. <laughs> so and, and then he tackles the whole. But what about Steve problem? Right. Which is some of the people reading this will know some of the people that would have to be in on the globalist space lizard program and would know them well <laughs> enough to know they're not. This is a subchapter called programmed programming where he starts off by complaining that health journalists don't even ask Reiki practitioners about the diseases and stuff. Yeah, which, just for the record, he's actually wrong about. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not a good point, even if he was, but Reiki is one of the most tested and disproven in the category of bullshit, right? So the they haven't checked is wrong about wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yet, you can still get your insurance, including Medicare, here in the United States, to cover Reiki. Oh, Jesus. You just have to get a real thing plus Reiki, and they oh, cover it. That's so fucked up. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. God. I, and also, this is like I thought he was going to actually make it. We we're more than halfway through the chapter. He hadn't brought up the Matrix yet. I was really, I had high hopes for him, <laughs> but no. No, he, he loses it here. No, he, he hits that almost every moment. So, just to be clear, though, in David Icke's idea of the Matrix, Neo went to the Oracle and choked on one of her cookies. Then he went outside during a storm, got struck by lightning and shat himself. And then he wrote this book. Yeah. He's the one. Yeah. And then he dedicates a subchapter to like his don't think you're little, think you're a good size message. <laughs> he said, he's like the key to life is not caring what other people think of you. I'm like, dude, you have complained a hundred and 44 times so far in this book, including on the cover about how insane people say you are. <laughs> he does. Just to review now. So algebra is a scam. Mm -hmm. Quantum resonance are two words he used. We're in the matrix. And that means, of course, three, two, one. 
all the political parties are the same. He really yep. makes that point here. He says, and it's the weirdest way to describe this. He's like, so you know how there's uh, a bunch of types of cheese, but only two major political parties? <laughs> Rothschild Nazi matrix robots, yep. U.S. and U.K. <laughs> same thing. Democrats, Republicans, Labor, Tories, all the same. Yeah. At one point, he says they sell us our dreams to keep us asleep. And that line was like too good for him. So I had to Google it to find out what pop song he stole it from. I didn't find one. So if if, if you know, feel free to message me. <laughs> yeah. Just David Icke hiding in the bushes behind stone teenagers taking notes. <laughs> just like the matrix yeah. got it <laughs> this is where I, I i distilled the thesis of the chapter into accomplishments equals sour grapes <laughs> then he invokes a theoretical martian that agrees with him for two fucking pages right he's just he's like if you imagine a martian looking at this they would probably agree with me that work sucks <laughs> but yeah man we all agree that work sucks we just don't all agree that it's evidence of trans-dimensional space lizard exactly also dentistry like you pointed out before yeah. yes imagine needing the explanation for not enjoying your job at chipotle to be i bet the jews have simulated reality to drain my <laughs> spiritual energy for their god devil that's when <laughs> Otherwise, I would love scooping these beans. Feels like, yeah, it's a bunch of work stress for the space lizards, too, now that I think about it. Maybe they're being simulated by, like, meta-Jew lizard. Sorry, extra corn? Yeah, got it. Got it. Is this here? Right here? Corn? Don't just ask for a tortilla with beans and cheese. That's not a hack. That's not, you're just stealing from Chipotle. I don't fucking care, but it's not a hack. All right, so, and, and then we learn that money is how they get you in a subchapter called Money, 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 Funny Money. What? No idea. There's a video on his website that'll explain how money works if you're interested, by the way. Yeah, I uh, checked it out because I have the ebook version and don't. it's a broken link. But then I Googled it don't and Google. I found a clone of it on fucking boottube.com. And this video is scientifically designed, my friends, to raise Heath's blood <laughs> pressure. Don't. Like, just like don't. if Heath nope. were ever frozen in ice and I were called on to reanimate him, I'm going to play this video at him. God. Okay. In fairness to this video, though, it is how money works if algebra is indeed a hoax. Right. Yeah, That's exactly. True. If you don't give a fuck what X equals. <laughs> right. Ah, uh, So, yeah, but this is where it explains that being poor sucks, ergo Illuminati lizards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He also says being rich sucks because... You know, being poor would suck. Extra ergo Illuminati. Lizards. Yeah, that's really one of his points he makes. Uh, I, I in my notes, I've just written. Please explain how the Fed is a Ponzi scheme. Please, oh please, oh please, oh, please. <laughs> it gets really fucking close. He does. It gets really close. He tries to explain fractional reserve banking, and it it's goes so good, so very badly. He's like, banks are allowed to have ninety percent magical. It's X times. <laughs> oh no, Jew! And look, it's, it's <laughs> you see him shaking in the book and then saying a slur word. Oh, and again, I'm like, yes, banks suck. Still not proof of the Illuminati, dude. Nope, it's so close. He gets so fucking close. He's like, okay, they charge you money just to hold your money, and. <laughs> you should be doing that. So close, Davey. So close. Yeah. Also, congrats to whatever Lizard Bank is giving David Icke a negative interest rate on his deposits. <laughs> I'm real yeah, happy right, about that. Yeah. So here, I actually almost wrote this down because here's the thing. Almost certainly what this means is that David Icke is constantly going over his bank balance <laughs> <laughs> or not having like the thousand dollars required in his account to avoid those charges. And he's just tattling on Davey here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and, and then his list of, of pillars of society that suck finally rolls around to religion under the subheading The God Program. And I'm like, do, do not make me agree with you again, motherfucker. <laughs> but luckily, his this whole subchapter is just like a list of weird shit that Jews do. Okay. <laughs> it is, though. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, guys. Guys, look, we don't like to agree with David Icke at any of these moments, but... I mean, the chicken swinging feels spaceless. No, that's... Right? It feels... <laughs> Stupid fucking Jewish religion. Anyway, turquoise is magic, and I'm a transcendental godhead. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. You know what really grinds my gears about the Jews? I'm going to do a whole yeah. section about that. No, right? Yeah. The opening sentence is religion is bad, and then everything else after that is like like Judaism, for example. <laughs> it is, though. But then he, he like adds like all the non-Jewish faiths 
into their own subchapter called Madness, Madness Masquerading as Faith. Yeah, so I guess that's a little bit better. Just just no spoiler, he's going to circle right the fuck back to Judaism after this. Absolutely. Well, even within this, right? Because he's like, well, the problem with Christianity is that it's too satanic. And I'm like, dude, I agree with almost every sentence that starts that way, but you still manage to flub <laughs> yeah. it. It's hard to do. Okay, did you guys, during this little section, did you guys have a gross curiosity about what the good religion David keeps referencing looks like? <laughs> right? Because I feel like it's standing in fields getting magic powers from the Godhead. I think you're right. Yeah. It is that, and shitting yourself and then lying about it. And it's definitely talking too loud at a bar, but everyone somehow likes you and you're popular <laughs> and you have a top shelf Long Island. Ah, uh, so it, it, he also points out, by the way, that really liking a baseball team is also a religion. So that sucks too, I guess. Yeah. Except for being a Yankees fan, which is delightful. And I think we can all agree the Yankees are the lizard alien demon Jews of baseball. Oh, right? Very so clearly. I, yeah. I, I yeah, think a lot of people would fan. agree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to varying extents, people would agree. It's like being in the house at a casino. Like you gotta love it. Yeah. There's a bit at the end here, too, where he's like, the Illuminati don't re really care what you believe as long as you don't believe the thesis of this book. And I'm like, I'll take that deal, right? So you can, <laughs> you guys can have my monoatomic gold or whatever it is. You're at my fear or whatever that you eat. And then we, we wrap up on this enigmatically titled subheading called pennies, in parentheses, real ones, are dropping. What? Fuck it. What? Yeah. He's, he, he tries to put a positive spin on this, but of course it has, it's David Icke. So it's like, the good news is that people have never been more disconnected from reality. Yes. <laughs> right. Because you have to understand that everything terrible that's happened over the last however many years is all good for David Icke. Right. So he steps into Bizarro World and spends a subchapter praising like, Unmonitored social internet and the inability to do lateral research. I I thought he was going to praise bipolar disorder next. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> working great for me, guys. Also, just peeked ahead a little bit to the rest of this book. Right in the next chapter, we're going to get CIA magic, global warming, Russia, vaccines. It's it's like a bunch of like a Billy Joel song. Yeah. We're also going to get fifty three mentions of the Rothschild family coming up. <gasps> 61 mentions of the Clinton oh, family won. coming up. I'm surprised. And 243 mentions of Zionism. Jesus. Coming up. Ooh, that doesn't count Christ. Judaism, Jewish, no. Ju none of that. Just yeah, no. Zionism specifically. Wow. Lucky us. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to close this book and give ourselves another month to work up the nerve to open it again. Until then, remember, kids, reading is overrated. Before we reel in the line tonight, I want to give you yet another reason to come see us at QED in Manchester, England on October 29th and 30th. Just announced breaking news on the Friday before the conference on the 28th. Our very own Heath Enright is going to be hosting a trivia quiz that's open to any QED ticket holder. Space is limited, though. Uh, they're already getting a bunch of sign so you are encouraged to register ahead if you want to attend. Look for more information on the show notes for this episode or at qedcon.org. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait the long, be on the lookout for our brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Monday, an even newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Nita, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this episode wouldn't episode right if I neglected to thank Ethan Wright for being the rassin to my frassin, Eli Bosnick for being the rootin' to my tootin', and Lucinda illusions for being the dag to my nabbit also want to thank travis for providing this week's farnsworth quote and at least to some degree this week's air but most of all of course i want to thank this week's best bipeds warhammer 300 sean benjamin yonan jason the brian d when will you clean up alan dershowitz List, drake ian brian lane sherry pra mike and evan Warhammer, Sean, Benjamin, Yonan, and Jason, who are so badass they eat jawbreakers like jelly beans. Brian, Cleanup, Drake, Ian, and Brian, who are so hot in the sun, worries about getting them burns. And Lane, Sherry, Piare, Mike, and Evan, who are so smart they're allowed to wear mortarboard hats just whenever they want. Together, these 15 delectable disbelievers deign to donate dollars to our desperate diatribes against deistic delusion this week by giving us money. If you, too, would like to give us money, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn access to an extended ad-free version of every episode. Or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help a podcast you've donated to have burned you before, you can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and following at PAATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson handles our social media and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark. We also all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com.
pretty narrow cast on the sponsor. Okay, and intro. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's for Marsh. It's really it's sometimes for, it's, it's for just Marsh. for us. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright twenty twenty two. All rights reserved. When you think of first energy, you probably think about the men and women who keep the lights on. What you might not know is that they're also lighting the way in our community. See their stories at firstenergycorp.com slash light the way. Loading the kids in the car, brokering peace in the back seat, mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who live in